Today I'm going to show you how to take a pair of damaged secondhand shoes and customize them into something much nicer. Let's take a tour of the damage. So I bought these shoes for about 10% of what you would pay for them new. Um, I'm actually a little surprised that a major resale platform would even sell them because they're pretty damaged. So let's take a look. It looks like somebody dropped a box cutter here because that's a fairly deep surface scratch. There's some scuffing, which is pretty standard. An attempt to fix the scuffing, which I find very interesting, but it's not color match, so we'll talk about how to do that. The soles are pretty yellowed, and they're starting to pull away from the leather. This can be more unsightly when it's on the toe, but I'd like to fix it here anyway to make these sneakers more durable. Then there's something a little bit hard to see, but there's some oxidation here. Light colored leather tends to turn yellow over time. So you can kind of see the difference between factory silver and oxidized color here. And that's probably why this attempt to patch it up failed. Um, I'm going to be publishing stills of all the types of damage and how to diagnose them separately. But I'll walk you through the process in a video form because the gestures are pretty important. So here's what we're going to turn them into. You can see I did wear these, <laughs> but the sole is much whiter. The stitching is whiter. Um, there were actually not insignificant number of scratches on these, but between the healing work that I did and the patina, you can't really see them anymore. The insoles are clean. The laces are clean. Basically, you kind of get a whole new shoe, except for some slight wear to the soles. So what do you need to do this? In the description, depending on which platform you're on, I'll put a list of nice-to-haves and must-haves. Um, but it takes a little bit of doing. Um, but if you buy some of these things, you'll have them for your, your used shoes that you might buy and damage that you might do to your own shoes. So first, this is super important, a form of leather cleaner. This is not the world's most sustainable way of cleaning your leather shoes. They are disposable wipes by Jason Mark, but I really, really like them because they're safe on every single surface of the shoe, the rubber, the laces, the leather. And because they're in a white form, you can't make it too wet because you never really want it. Leather can get wet, but you never really want to make it soaked. And these also teach you not only to keep things damp, not wet, but also to apply only the gentlest pressure. There's some beads on these, which I'll show you, that do all the friction work for you so you don't have to put in a ton of elbow grease. Another kind of must-have, I have several sizes here, but I would say this medium size is the most important. Sometimes leather dye and like various solutions are going to come with a sponge. I find a paintbrush much better for my purposes. Um, it's a lot easier to clean. These are Taclon bristles, which is a plastic, and they're in a light color, so I know if I've gotten my brushes clean. These are perfect to use with acrylic paints because it just really rolls right off, even if you let it dry a little bit. Um, and again, I have various sizes, but you can probably pull everything off with this middle size. This is a round brush, by the way. That's my preference. For larger surfaces, I like a square brush, but that is really quite personal. To fix the pulling away that I was showing you, you'll need this kind of shoe cement. I think you could probably use any rubber cement, but I really like this Angelus one because it is guaranteed to work for shoes and Angelus makes leather products so I know that it's not going to hurt my leather if I accidentally get it somewhere. This comes with a brush. Um, it's way too big <laughs> for fixing shoes so I tend to use a glue spreader because that's even easier to clean than a brush but again you could use the round brush to do this. So the essential here is the shoe cement. The other essential is a hammer. Now I have a nylon tipped hammer because this is what I use to make bags, um, but you really don't need that. As long as you have a regular hammer and something to pat it, I really like a glasses cloth because it's dust free and you can fold it up and it really adds a nice padding. 
Um, but you do need some kind of hammer to force the rubber onto the cement. Now, as far as color, this is, I picked a light color shoe to do this demonstration on because that way you can see the scratches better and also light colors are way less forgiving. So you'll be able to see just how much we can actually do. Because I should say, this is a lot like when a human gets surgery and you have a scar and it never really goes away, but you can make it look a lot better. The patina is really where we're gonna make the scars disappear and make the shoes your own. So that being said, um, you really wanna get the closest color match possible. Now, when I did these ones, I was able to get just one color because these were newer. These have been oxidized, like I said, so they're slightly yellow. The product that I prefer for this job is the Chirago Self Shine Color Dye. They give you a, um, an alcohol solution to prepare the leather. I don't really use that for cases of just scratches. Um, and it's always a good idea to, especially if you're ordering online, to pick like a base color. You might want to order like more than one and then to determine if there's any undertone. Now here, it's probably hard to see on the video, but I determined that there was a slight yellow cast. So I got cream color to also mix in. And you can, it can never really hurt you to get like a black and a white as well, so you can tint and tone it. And the white will tend to have a yellower undertone and the black will tend to have a bluer undertone and that will also help you color match. Um, that's more of like a paint theory thing, so there might be people that are able to better explain it than me. But what I will say is this Chirago is not actually often recommended. Um, people tend to like the Angelus one better. For this purpose, I find this is much better because this paint has a lot more body. It is acrylic based, so really sometimes you won't even need anything else to fill in scratches. You can just use this fine coating of acrylic and it'll do the job really nicely. However, if you have a pretty big scrape where there's leather loss, which there is some here, leather filler is a good idea. I have not had luck using this. Um, this is from Leather World Technologies. I have not had luck using this first by itself, but I have had luck using it as a thickener for my dyes and then mixing it on and using the acrylic plus this is kind of like wood filler almost it's got like a sawdusty type consistency i think it's ground up leather actually to kind of get you back the surface and add even more body to a paint that already has body this is pretty optional i think most of the time you can heal the damage with paint um i should also say there tarago makes another product you can tell i haven't used this because it's dry out <laughs> I ordered it by accident. Um, this is, if you have a really simple shoe and it's like a black shoe or a white shoe or, or just like you know you have the perfect color match, this takes care of basically these three steps. I'm going to get to this one in a minute because um, it's a cream based dye. Um, this is really easy to use. It even comes with like a little sponge of its own. Um, but I don't like this as much for getting an exact color match. So again, if it's something simple and you want to like touch something up on the go, this is really good. This is way better than a shoe polish. Um, but I prefer to kind of separate out the steps and that's where the Sofia Renovato comes in. This I use to re-nourish the leather because the scratches also are kind of like dryness. It's sort of like having dry skin. This can also lift some of the dye if we've put too much, because that does happen. <laughs> um, this is a more specialty product, so I would say this is an acceptable alternative from Chamberlain's Leather Milk. Uh, this one's much cheaper. I will say this one is a lot more liquid, and like I said, we really want to stick to a damp application rather than a wet application. And then it should also be said that you need something underneath your surface. This is a fancy silicone mat that I use. You don't have to do that. You could use a plastic bag, a garbage bag, newspaper, just something because this does get a little messy and acrylic will come out of most things, including your clothes. Um, but it's just a good idea. Also, they're shoes, so the bottom is kind of dirty. And then you need rags. Um, these are microfiber rags. I got them in black because I can have my black dye stains on them and it doesn't matter. I really like these because they are dustless microfiber. 
Um, I use them all throughout the process to kind of like buff things down, um, lift when there's too much dye. Um, but again, you could use whatever you want. Um, an old t-shirt is a great idea. Um, towels are a less good idea because they tend to leave dust. And that said, if you really want to use a disposable, you can sometimes get away with a paper towel, but don't use a tissue because those tend to leave dust behind. And when we're trying to put acrylic on leather, we don't want dust getting trapped in there. All right, so that's kind of the gamut of projects that you need. Um, and then I will show you how to kind of get around healing some of this damage. Um, and to do that, I'm going to lift the shoelaces out and come back.